Well, our weather here in New England over the next couple of weeks will be a little bit different than what we've experienced so far this winter. I'm meteorologist Danielle Noyce. This is your pattern predictions. A look at the next two weeks of weather. You can find the 14-day forecast right on our free weather app. Search one degree outside weather in the App Store and Google Play. This is the why behind the forecast. And what I want to show you right off the bat is the temperature difference from average. You think, ooh, this is a lot of oranges and reds on the map above normal temperatures, which has been the case in portions of the country already this winter, just not for us here at home. Watch what happens, though. Pattern shift coming in. That warmth expands east to us in New England, up and down the eastern seaboard here for the tail end of the first week of January, right on through mid-month. Now, it is winter after all, so there will be some colder than normal spots, particularly from California down into the desert southwest here towards the January 9th, 10th time frame. Some of that cooler air expanding across the southeastern United States. But where are we? Still near or above average, right on through mid-month. The one thing I do want to show you is that there will be some colder air waiting in the wings up in central Canada. So although we're above average, the cold is waiting to come back. And so there will be another pattern shift likely as we head in towards the tail end of the month with a return to cold air. Now, the jet stream, of course, is that river of air high in the sky. It steers storms and it acts like a thermostat. So if we're on the northern side of the jet stream, we're cold. Well, watch what happens to the jet stream. It actually lifts north. So we get this ridge and we're on the south side of it, the warmer side here towards the tail end of the week for the start of next week. We do get these cool or cooler shots that come in, but they're very short lived and a continued fast flow, meaning multiple disturbances do come by. But the question is, do any of them phase? Last pattern predictions we talked about, probably no big blockbuster storm. I can't necessarily say that this time around, only because we do get a big dip in the trough that comes in to the eastern seaboard through the middle part of the month at times. And the question is, will there be enough cold air coming in and the phasing of the southern stream and northern stream or tapping some of the Gulf and the Atlantic for more moisture? So at least the chance is there and the potential is there for a more formidable storm. I think the question becomes, is it too mild for a substantial snowfall in southern New England, and most of the snow is focused to the north. That's the case through the middle part of the month, too. Notice another dip coming in with the jet stream right over us as the colder air returns, too. So it could get a little more interesting towards the tail end of the month. So let's break it down. Temperature-wise, you remember last pattern predictions for some of the daytime highs? We were talking single digits and teens. That is not the case this time of the round. The coldest temperatures in the beginning and the tail end of the period, which will be slightly cooler than average, Everything else in between, above normal for January here. Talking about highs in the 40s, some spots in southern New England will likely touch 50, and widespread upper 30s to lower 40s through the middle part of the month. Then we gradually tick those temperatures back down a little bit. Same goes for overnight lows. Remember, we had single digits, some sub-zero readings in northern New England. Not this two-week period where overnight lows and morning lows will generally be running in the 20s. Actually, towards the tail end of the week, uh, we may get some record warm overnight lows. Parts of southern New England will actually be in the 40s. And then we get, again, gradually come back down into the 20s. So maybe slightly cool as an average towards the tail end of the period. In terms of precipitation chances, well, we are talking about multiple disturbances this week, that wintry mix, and then some lingering pockets of rain and freezing rain and snow through the middle part of this week. As we head into the 9th and 10th, it goes back up two for Friday into Saturday. Comes back down a little bit on Sunday. There'll still be a chance of some snow showers upslope coming back in. And then next week, several disturbances coming by that will increase the chance for some showers, both rain and snow coming in. They're fast moving disturbances, but we'll see if they can gather any more moisture off the Atlantic towards the middle and end of next week. So in terms of precipitation, still fairly quiet in the central United States, still pretty stormy in the Pacific Northwest with some localized flooding and some intermountain snow. Otherwise, we do have a little bullseye here over the Tennessee River Valley, and we're kind of in between. So maybe at or slightly below average in terms of precipitation, and that translates to snowfall too. Northern New England, right where we want it for ski country, right? Over the next 10 days, anticipating a widespread 6 to 12 inches of snow. Again, with the deeper blues and purples. So far northern New England is the jackpot here. The farther south you come, it's what we've seen, right? These fast disturbances that bring more nuisance-type events with the coating to perhaps an inch or two here and there. Also some higher totals in eastern Canada back through the Great Lakes. And then a little bit of storminess, too, that may bring 
some snowfall across the central United States through the extended period. So you can watch us 24 seven, stay tuned all the time, anytime, anywhere on your smart TV, open up the YouTube app, search one degree outside network, always at one degree outside live and tap the home screen of our free weather app.